the NDI transmitting, so maybe I can edit this stuff out. I don't know. But you can okay. hear me fine, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hear you just fine. Sounds so um, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the interview. Um, this was uh, totally brutal trying to get this set up. I thought it was going to be easier than it was, but the technology isn't there yet. Not and, there. Um, I'm too old. Like if I was 20 years younger, we would have snapped this off in a second. But here we are doing like a recording. And um, I see uh, from our conversation earlier, you can see I got my my good shirt on. I got all dressed up. You got your uh, new shirt on. Oh, yeah. It looks like uh, looks like one of yours. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah okay. I didn't do that. <laughs> shameless. I'm shameless. No, that's, uh, you know. Uh, I don't put myself out there enough, so uh, gotcha. even though <laughs> you do, if you're not going to be your own champion, who will? Exactly. Um, so um, we have no idea how this is going to turn out. Hopefully, people are going to end up watching it. Uh, it could go yeah. straight into the trash can. But I uh, thank you for taking time out to to do this little interview. Anytime, anytime. Um, so if you're tuning in, I got uh, Kevin Mills here. Now, um, Kevin, uh, the Z on the end of your name, is that real or is that artistic? That is my stage name. I, my last name is Morella. Oh, so, you're an yeah. Italian like me. Yeah, all the way. <laughs> awesome. So you, uh, so you have a gnome de plume, uh, like an artist's name. Yeah, yeah, pen name, I guess. So okay. it's, I've actually gone by that for a while before I even started drawing, so... It's just always been on there like that, even on my personal profile. So, okay, cool. That's how most people know me. All right, awesome. Um, so, uh, you're a designer, uh, you're an illustrator. I know you want to uh, differentiate that, and it's true that you do both, really, right? You're an illustrator yeah. and a designer. Um, and right now, you're doing a lot of work in the fish industry, the fish hobby. Um, tell me, let's first question would be, how'd you get your start in the aquarium hobby? So my first tank I ever had, uh, my friend, Paul Michael, he called me up and was like, Hey, my mom doesn't want her fish tank anymore. Do you want it? So ran over to his house. It was like one of those little, like 25 gallon bio cubes, things like super small. Uh -huh. I just picked it up with all the water in it, put it in the back of my car and then took it home. There's a glowfish and a, a albino tiger Oscar. In it. It was like, <laughs> the worst. It was like a 29. <laughs> yeah, worst startup tank ever. We got some more fish, realized I was going to need a bigger tank, and then it went out and got like a 100 gallon uh, from someone on Craigslist. And that's pretty much how it started. Uh, how long ago was that? That was 2015, 2014, something like that. All right. Okay. Uh, so you got a couple, couple years under your belt. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. More than me. So really? Uh, yeah, I know. Don't say just because I'm an old timer. I see what you're thinking. Like, dude, this guy's been in the hobby for like 25 years. But no, just like three or four years. Oh, yeah. No, it's never too late to start. Never too yeah. late. <laughs> well, that's what they say about like school and stuff. I don't know if they mean fish hobby. Never know. Fish hobby, maybe um, maybe that'll be the new way to go with all this coronavirus. People can't leave their houses, so they got to feed their families with tropical fish. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you talk about eating fish. I, I don't think we want to go down. Like, that took a really no, dark turn. Not, I, I know make, where you were going with it. I'll be a cannibal then. <laughs> Basically, um, fish. Cool. So, uh, that's how you got your start, but uh, somehow you made it to the uh, the African. Do you. Yeah. Is that your African cichlids? Yes. Uh, I got my first online order was from Dave's Rare Fish. And I got some Metroclima uh, Fanzelberry. Yeah, and, that's hard name to say, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even know if I said <laughs> it right, but that's how I say it. And uh, berry. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. But we know when you say that, we know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, that was where I started. And since then, I just got hooked on mostly in Buna. Um, I like some of the haps, obviously. Um, not really into peacocks, but just depends <laughs> They're kind the of boring, aren't they? Yeah, they're so boring. No aggression. <laughs> I like a little, you know, a little bit of aggression in the tank. Yeah, I like. Um, I'm kind of 
I looked on Mbuna too, and it seems like um, they're not as popular as they used to be. I think, like, and um, I don't blame Trophius because Trophius are a great substitute for Mbuna, but um, man, I loved my Mbuna tank, and I've tried a bunch of different tanks, and that was one of my favorite, but you legit can't give away Mbuna in these, this day and age, like, you know. Uh, uh. And people only, even if they want anything, they want peacocks um, or, or large haps. I mean, I love predator haps, but anyway, yeah, um, down the rabbit hole there. You agree. Uh, you can go <laughs> on that subject forever. <laughs> right. You could do like a whole hour on that. Yeah. Um, okay. So we got the basics. You killed that albino tiger Oscar. Right? Well, he lived a really long time. Oh, did <laughs> yeah. somewhere else or in that 29? I, I ended up putting him in a 100, then a 160. I had over like 40 tanks at one point, and so uh -huh. they kind of st stayed around just ceremoniously in the, you know, the center house tank. But, um, nah, the, I ended up going ridiculous with the amount of tanks, and I had them in every room in my house at one point. Uh-huh. Have you downsized? Yeah, I'm sure. Super downsized. I had to move, um, and so I had to, you know, give away a lot of the fish, and I had to sell some online. Um, then I kept some of them in a tank at my mom's house for a little bit, uh, like the ones I wanted to keep, the rare fish that I had, and she ended up giving them away to the local um, fish, like, maintenance tank guy. Like, he came over one time, and she thought the tank was dirty because there was algae, and she was like, just take them. Yeah, he took <laughs> Took that, took like 20 of my tanks that I had left in the garage too while oh. I was out of town. It was, it was sad. You, you, you clearly got on your mom's bad side, but we, well, that's a oh. subject for another conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she gave away your fish. That's brutal. Yeah, she um, had no idea. You know, she didn't know what they were worth. Um, I, so I'm going through that too right now. Coincidentally, I'm, I'm moving and downsizing my 40 tanks. And trying to and selling a lot of them, and but also trying to decide what to keep, like what to keep her and what isn't. Yeah. You you clearly made that decision. How did you decide what to keep her? What's a keeper for Kevin Mills? Uh, I kept most of my wild fish, pretty much anything that would be able to, you know, survive in a Buna tank. So any of my haps, you know, I had to get rid of any of the the South Americans that I had. Those had to go. Um, I just pretty much kept all wild and Buna species that I had at the time. Anything you could put into like one tank and and schlep around a bit? Yeah, yeah. It was like a 125 um, that I had set up. And I had like probably 40, you know, fish in there. I hate mixing. I, I like to keep species only tanks when I can. Yes. Um, but that's what I love. <laughs> biotopes, come on. Yeah, I'm all about biotopes, species only. Uh, I 100% agree with you there. Um, I do, I mean, my, my Mbuna tank was mixed, uh, but, uh, it was like mixed breeding groups, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. like I, I just can't stand seeing like one fish, one species, like one fish and then another species lone male just chilling. It's gotta be a little, a little, it's almost like, you know, a painting. It's a physical painting. Yeah. Three <laughs> That's a, that's a very good point. So talking about art, um, how long have you been doing art since you were a little kid? And uh, we know you do fish, but what else do you do? So, I, I mean, I went to art school. I went for film and sound design. I ended up getting um, a film minor and a sound major uh, bachelor's degree at the Savannah College of Art and Design. But at that point in time, I couldn't draw like, I mean, I can draw, like, you know, decent, but I still don't necessarily consider myself, like, super great, but I'm pretty handy with Illustrator at this point. Um, I started drawing fish September 2018. My first one was not that impressive, um, and over time, <laughs> I just... I mean, I is that, that still available out there? We can find that, that first fish? It is never... No, that one's never been released. Um it was it was like a draft for someone. I redid it because I was like, oh no, that's not. The <laughs> one. <laughs> but it looks cool. It does look really cool. But it's it's not um, it's not technically great. But the you know the style and the colors that I chose were cool. It was um, 
was. It was, I know it was a Amuna. I think it was Lacoma Island, Fanzelberry, maybe. Okay. Yeah. You, you just wanted to say Fanzelberry again. I yeah. know. That's all I love. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. just flexing. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, cool. So, you're, uh, is it safe to say you can't really freehand all that great? No, I, I can. I mean, I used to draw like cartoon characters when I was a kid. I don't know if you've seen like Dragon Ball Z. I think like everyone that. has. Yeah, I got kids. Yeah, yeah I, I used to draw those guys um, like in pencil, you know, number two pencil. I, I, I'm I'm not horrible, but I never considered myself uh, a, like an artist from the pen or pencil standpoint until recently. So, okay. you know, I, I did a lot of music, a lot of sound design um, stuff early on. Still do, but that's another story I had some stuff go down with my old recording studio. So um, that's an interesting subject, though. What kind of music were you producing? Or can I guess? Go ahead and guess. I've, I got two guesses. Yeah. Um, this is going to be wrong. OK, one would be like hip hop. The other would be like dubstep. Um, I don't really get you for like a techno or a drum and bass guy. You're but, super uh, close there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's like a fusion. Like, um, it was definitely. Like an instrumental hip hop, hip -hop uh, trip hop, psychedelic, yeah, trip hop, yeah. basically. Um, but I produced everything from like uh, acoustic to like hardcore, like death metal stuff. Too, <laughs> I've, we had a lot of clients in and out. I'm just all around. Like, I, if if it sounds good, I can make it sound good. You know. Oh, cool. So you uh, you have studio chops, producer chops behind the boards. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely cool. mixing, mastering, foley. Um, that's what I, that's what I went to school for. So, and that's like a major aspect of how they teach it in school is, you know, for production as far as films go. You uh -huh. know, there's still a little side of it, but. So, um, you're interested in sound design and stuff like that. You would like to do sound design on films. Oh yeah, I mean if there's any gigs out there, you know, holler. But I haven't done something <laughs> like that in a while. I, I know I won a, I got an award once um, at a couple, actually more than one film festival for an animation that I did the sound design on. So that was cool. Awesome. That's it's called cool. Through the Looking Glass. Through the Looking Glass. Yeah, by Hank Hamner. He's he's an awesome friend of mine that went to SCAD uh, too, and he's he was kind of in the illustration more than I am. Uh, so now I guess things have switched a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Like, you're a real renaissance man. You got a, a lot of uh, different talents. Um, uh, tell me about uh, Find Your Nemo. So Find Your Nemo, it literally started. The first one I ever made for the company was, have you seen the Umbuna, like sport looks kind of like the Puma logo? Like the Puma one I was trying to get the other day. It's got the... You got like two colorways in it or something, yeah, or yeah. just the one that says Mbuna that looks like a Puma. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying I like to get it. more of those out, but uh, man, swamped. But um, that was the first one that I, I put up on the store, and then it did pretty well. Like surprisingly, you know, a lot of people liked it. And then I was like, all right, maybe this is something. Um, I ended up linking up with Pete Barnes. Uh, I don't know if you know who he is, uh, but. Yeah. You could, can, you could tell the audience. Yeah, so he dives Malawi with Larry Johnson um, from Canada also. Um, but they go there. I think they've been going there for like almost 20 years straight to dive. So they probably like add Koenigs and uh, maybe like Pam Marsh and Pam Chin go out yeah. there too, right? They all go they, out all, every year. Exactly. And um, they just, you know, I send them some shirts and they shared it. Pete ended up connecting me with Ripple Africa, which is awesome. uh, one of the conservation organizations we've been working with to, you know, mostly promote. And then we're raising money uh, for their cause and a few other causes. And we're um, we want to do more. We did, you know, a little bit last year, but really the goal is to raise a million dollars, like through the sale of T-shirts to donate to these organizations that they just don't get the attention that they deserve, in my opinion. I mean, uh huh. You can walk out I, your door, see a tiger at the zoo, but you can't see. It's harder to see these type of fish, the ones that are actually endangered, or these food type species, you know, that are going extinct in Malawi. So 
I think they need a platform and hopefully I can provide that, you know. I, I hear you. I wanted to talk about your uh, conservation work um, in a second. I just wanted to get the lowdown on Find Your Nemo first to yeah. redirect you back. So um, is it your own thing? Do you have a partner? Um, uh, I started out Dolo and then I have recently linked up with uh, well, my first uh, partner is Jared uh, Cabin, JJ. Uh -huh. He works for um, Microsoft. Um, what's the company called? He's super busy right now. Uh, so we've been in the process of, you know, bridging what he's able to do with. I think Microsoft Azure is the is what he's like in charge of right now as far uh -huh. as the cloud service that they provide, but with us, we've been working with like some coding uh, people on his end. And then I've got, I don't know if you know Nicole Johnson. Um, I don't. She's from Ohio. She's avid fish keeper, uh, super cool. Has been, she's been supportive since day one. And she's been also helping with coding a, a brand new website for Find Your Nemo um, because we want to offer more features for you know the the hobby almost um we're going to be doing like a, basically a at sea style marketplace where people can bring their fish and sell them through uh you know a fish market live fish market that's i, I really want to have it all in one place i want to feature as many I, I mean i love buying fish online and i know the good places but i feel like a lot of people have no clue where to start you know and so that's what we've been working on in the background. Um, as far as Find Your Nemo goes, it's definitely going to advance um, quickly once that's set up. But for now, it's just you know me rocking it with the designs mostly. Um, how many uh, how many shirts have you designed? And well, I yeah. guess you don't do just shirts. So how well, many uh, how many products do you have on your website right now? We have I have like two hundred listed. I've I've probably taken down two hundred. Um, for when we were gonna first we were gonna remodel the site using the existing framework and that proved to be a little difficult um i've had a lot of technical issues with my website because i built it myself at first you know um but i started bringing people on and they're like yeah let's just let's let's start from scratch with clean code and and redo it so i, I ended up leaving at least like 200 items on there i'm putting more up every day like i need to add some women's stuff got to add some kids stuff um and i also have a few other artists i work with um my friend alex is you might know her as spawnicorn she does the zoological collection she's awesome um got my friend lincoln my friend tom is um got some cool designs up there uh, my friend michael he's also got some awesome stuff is l illustrations and then um we, i want to get scales on board real soon too because uh, uh, he's we've been talking back and forth and hopefully he'll be coming on and uh it's just seems a lot like, <laughs> seems like quite seems like the uh quite the marriage to get uh to get sam to do designs with oh you. yeah Sam's awesome yeah. man i love his work and yeah. i mean we've we've obviously known about each other since you know i started getting better i think he took notice and I, i've noticed his work since the start so i think it's only right that you know we combine our talents and Little little known fact, uh, Sam also used to be a DJ. Really? Hey. You got to ask him about that. I will. I'm going to have to have to find out what's going on there. Cool. <laughs> uh, DJ Sam. Scales. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but, I don't um, even know if that's his DJ name. Don't put me on blast, Sam. <laughs> I, I, know he, I know he used to DJ. Um, and uh, cool. That's awesome. It sounds like you got like uh, a lot on your hands and a lot of um big plans and how do yeah. you manage it all your yourself i mean i, I, I know you say you got team members but um i imagine you're doing a lot of like I, like i've run my own business so i imagine you're doing like every you're got a million hats on and stuff like that yeah yeah i do a lot of the heavy lifting i recently hired um my friend bailey uh she runs indigo creative ventures and she's awesome she just did an event with like 800 vendors, uh, like not too long ago, and we we've I've, I've known her for years. She used to date my best friend, and now she's kind of just 
doing the same thing online work and we just clicked up and ever since then you know things have been moving in a great direction i think i can see with her help i'll be able to do a lot more of the art that i want to do and mm -hmm. spend a little bit less time on like the content creation the marketing i do pretty much all that as as of right now so hopefully i'll be able to focus more on the artistic side of things and hand those so so off. ideally you you would be more like uh, percentage wise more artists than entrepreneur is Correct. that fair to say uh, i mean <laughs> I'm better at the entrepreneur like i can any business you put me behind the reins and i know what to do i'm really good at advertising um it's just finding the time to do it it's, it's almost like every single avenue that you can do you really have to focus on 100 percent. and so if you have to from you know a to B, a to z do everything yeah it gets tough so i mean i'm good at drawing i want to get better at drawing i really want to get really really good so so is that so something, is that, something that, you that you can do, you can do? like um is that uh, did that echo is that like um getting uh i mean can you just practice a practice to get better yeah pretty much uh it's it's really all time based if i can spend more time on a on a piece the more i can do to it's illustrator so it's just a graph like it's points on a graph and you're drawing within those points moving you know lines and points around and you can draw freehand but i i end up going back in and like refining my my line work and some of these illustrations they can take me anywhere from like you know 30 hours i, I think i did a flower horn that was like 120 hours more than that probably um of just like staring at it and then like readjusting and <laughs> you know, I do it all with this now. I used to do it with just uh just my fingers. Uh -huh. on the pad. That's when I started was just mouse pad. Wow. So, that yeah. uh, that sounds crazy. Like um how um what's it like having to look at your own work for that amount of time? Do you get sick of it? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like after, real, I mean. <laughs> yeah, after three hours of like I have to switch it. So I can work on one piece probably three hours straight before I have to change that piece. I, it's it's more like a, a like feel thing too. Like if I'm feeling good, I'm I'm gonna be moving faster and things are gonna be clicking. If I'm tired or if, if I'm just not into it at that moment, I just put it down because I don't wanna have something that doesn't reflect like my best work. And so, yeah, it's a lot of just like trying to do something. I mean, fins, man, these fins get crazy. But <laughs> that stuff is is nuts to do. I wouldn't suggest trying to do what I do. It's, it's, it's mind bending. Have, have you thought about, um, since you started drawing fish or illustrating uh, digitally, um, have you thought about doing other animals? Uh, yeah, I've, I've actually done some dogs. Uh, I'm working on one. I'm working on people, like a dog and people piece right now, which is like, it's it's tough, but it's cool. It's 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 fun to to do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done snakes. I'm doing a snake for dats right now. Um, I'm doing. I've done frogs. Anything. I can do anything as long so, as you know, I can see it. So it's. Um... It's safe to say that you also take commission work. Yep, I just did a logo <laughs> for a state senator, or he's he's in the in the running for state senator here in South Carolina. It's way more basic. It's like it's not anywhere on the fish detail level, but it still has qualities that are, you know, difficult to do. It's it's almost harder sometimes to do something so simplistic, you know. Uh -huh. So I just, let's see if I can pull it up. I don't know. I think I got it on my phone. Yeah. Where'd it go? Hey, man, I don't have an editor. We're going to have to edit this out. But I, oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're live. I'm just kidding. Over, now I can't even see it. Did you find it? Yeah, I just, it's okay. Forget it. No. no. <laughs> uh, we'll put it in the show notes or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bad. Here, this yeah. is, can you see? I don't even know if I can. No, I, I can't even see that, dude. Like, now yeah. it's just like a, bl whoa. Okay, now you're focusing. I see it. I don't know it's how to make it. It sort of looks like a license plate for Montana or something. Yeah, That's what I'm feeling. Like, it's the May River here in, is it? in Head. So nice. it's, it's cool, but it's not um, like fish stuff. So you're in South Carolina? Is that what I heard? Yep, South Carolina. 
I was um, I was out in uh, Charleston, out in Folly Beach. Uh, is it Folly Beach? Yeah, I was out there yeah. this summer. You guys got a cool aquarium. Are you anywhere near there? I'm about an hour and 30 minutes from the Charleston Aquarium. Uh, All right. I it's really a pretty want sick important. aquarium. It's, I think they won the, I don't know if it maybe it was the nation, number one aquarium in the nation or the world two years ago, I want to say. Oh, cool. But, yes, and the, the, um, it's really cool. The, the president of the Charleston Aquarium, his name is Kevin Mills, but with an S. Oh. Yeah. Plus that's Someone his real name. Him. They got us confused. On, yeah, that's probably his real name. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Another interesting fact. Uh, so uh, you have been doing a lot of uh, conservation type work. Uh, clearly, early on, you hooked up with some of the heavy hitters like Pete Barnes, um, maybe uh, you know the Stuart Granty Foundation. I don't know, but you were talking about Ripple Africa. Um, yeah. Tell us about some of the organizations that you've worked with. Tell us why it's important to you. And uh, tell us about the uh, the million dollar campaign that you uh, put together maybe last year or so. Yeah. To, so to you can talk about that stuff. Okay, so I think it was probably the beginning of 2019 when things finally started rolling. I first linked with Ripple um, and I made a, a just simple design, like it was like a combination of our logos. Um, and then I put it up on the website to try to bring them some attention. I did a couple of small, uh, like raise money campaigns and they did OK. Um, but the overall goal was to donate a million dollars. Like I just was, I was thought, OK, how can I really make an impact here? Because most of the time, you know, people are just willing to to give a little bit like you'll see like oh 10 percent of the proceeds go to this blah 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 i wanted to do something that was gonna make a big difference so the the way that works is anytime you buy something on the website that is branded with like the ripple africa design or the name or anytime you buy like something that says Stuart grant uh gbas is on there the green bay aquarium society um, we have, I think, conservation. We have the Rep the Amphibian Foundation and Rare Sea, which is the Rainforest Awareness Conservation Alliance. Um, and so, pretty much, I think that's what it is. It's I always get it messed up. It. <laughs> but um, either way, they're all great. I, I really am trying to get more designs made for them. Uh, it's just hard balancing. I did a lot of commissions at the beginning of 2008 or 2019 also, and I'm still <laughs> still working on them, uh, some of them. Just probably like 10 more from that time period that just, I did like over 300 um, at this point. So it's been- and That's active. like a, a lot of uh, logos and stuff for the hobby. Logos, yeah. just custom, like- Custom oh, private I'm work. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, it was, it was getting ridiculous um, at certain points. Just because people, you know, everyone's Amazon. Everyone's like, oh, it's be here tomorrow. No, <laughs> I got to drive. Man. <laughs> and so it's it's been putting a little bit of a hamper on my ability to network. And, and that's what ultimately allowed me to get in with all these conservation organizations was my networking. I ended up linking up with Stuart Grant through uh, one of my really good friends, Mattia Matteris. Uh He was the diet for the Nat Geo expedition, one of them. Obviously, Pam was on there, T-Bone was on there. Um, and that was really cool for them. I ended up, uh, I checked my email one day and I got an email from Ad and he was like, I love my shirt. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> Ad just emailed me. That's pretty cool. Um, right. And so ever since then, I mean, we were able to donate um, a decent amount of money off our first run of shirts. Nothing crazy, it was like a couple hundred, um, I think. But I really am trying to get more to them directly through the initial sales. And then obviously the, the million dollar donation is coming once we reach a million unit sales. So, so it's, um, it's a process. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. um, we both of us have not done a Skype interview before, so Never. we don't know how to get it done. Um, are, are there products right now that people can can buy yeah. that go towards that? 
Exactly. Um, if there are these things called um, collections on the website. Um, and so it's on the front page. You can scroll down and you'll see each like organization. You'll click it and there will be a logo shirt. I'm working on more like actual fish designs. Like right now I'm doing trophies to Boise Maswa. Um, like from like ad sent me some pictures, um, some really nice ones. And so I'm, I'm doing those. Um, and then those will, once those release, all the proceeds from those shirts will go directly to the Stewart Grant organization. I'm really trying to find a way to automate it because a lot of times it's me having to like go back through and see if anything sold. Um, same thing with Ripple Africa. I'm working on like a really detailed array of chromis. Uh, Lidol, I think is what it is. Uh, basically right. chombo fish. And uh -huh. uh, I'm, I've been trying to get that one finished for a while, but I'm just, I really want it to be good so that way because I, I released one a while back, it was like kind of, I half-assed it to get it out there, you know? Uh-huh. So busy, and, and it didn't it didn't perform as well as what I wanted, so I just realized, okay, if, in order to really get this right, I've got to put the time into the drawings and, you know, make sure that they're cool, too, so. It ain't easy. Um, uh, do, you, <laughs> do you, how do you know when something's done? I mean, I, you, I gotta believe that you have not, stuff uh, that you put there that, Kind of makes you mad when you see it yeah it's never done some of it's just <laughs> it's just like they were like yo how much long i had a couple guys freak out on me like freaking um they would like ask for refunds and obviously i'm not gonna you know force them to pay me so i'll refund them but because i normally do everything up front because i had a lot of people bail like i i if it takes me 40 hours to draw the fish you know that's a lot of time i don't get my time back but i don't i really I'm cool. I'm super cool. So I worked with everyone, but it just, whenever they get mad enough to be like, I want it now, that's, that's when I finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You did something for me. I don't recall saying I want it now. I still got you it. You were perfect. You were, you were the <laughs> ideal, ideal person to work with because <laughs> you were so chill, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I yeah, it is, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's tough that I, I do uh, some of these interviews when I'm talking to people about turning your hobby into a business and um, it can be really tough. I mean, because uh, art does take time, quality takes time, um, and no one ever said that the, the artist was 100% uh, going to be ready to handle an influx of, of business and oh, no. you got to manage that too. and. Yeah. And, no, I don't even. I don't even do. Right now, I'm really avoiding commissions. I'll I'll take them if they're like, like 500 plus, I guess. Um, but I've still been. I have. I don't actively search. I haven't actively reached out for a new commission since August of last year. So, I will mix it in. I'll do them for like friends. They'll ask me, and I'll be like, yeah, you know. Um, and stuff like that. But as of right now, I'm still, I probably won't do much more fish commission work. Um, I'm, I've been doing logo, like the, the Senate logo, stuff like that. That's uh -huh. here. And I mean, I can do one in, you know, 30 minutes and it's very simple and I can deliver that and charge much higher premium because of what it is, you know, and, and it's all about the client. You charge based on client and not based on time, really. And so you're like any a sliding point. scale. Yeah. I mean, I can charge, I've seen some companies pay like $100,000 for a logo. You know, yeah. I want that. Where's that gig at? Like, it's out there. <laughs> so I just got to find it. Um, it's well, usually I mean, I think that people that get logos uh, should probably remember that. Um, for the most part, that logo is going to identify you for oh, yeah. for life. Yep. Um, I mean, I have logos from companies that I did, and and um, not that I not that I designed it, but had logos done. Yeah. And man, do those logos last forever? You know, like yeah. you're looking at them forever until you're done with that company or you close it down. And yeah, I mean. Uh, on say this shirt, like the cost of a shirt for a major corporation is, is inexpensive. I, I pay extra to have a separate warehousing facility and I don't, I don't have to literally do any of the t-shirt work, thank God, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but freaking, uh, as soon as you put something on that, that marking, you know, now the shirt's 25, 35 bucks, like even a little simple Nike swoosh. So, uh -huh. you know, I mean, how much is that 
little I, I used to you know watch videos on logo pricing and the, the my favorite quote is like once you put that little check mark on there how much is that worth billions you know that company's one of the most profitable companies on the planet so it's all about understanding your market and you know what that message is that you're trying to accomplish um with that design cool um so uh we talked about find your nemo we talked about conservation let's talk about the hobby a little bit you yeah. downsize um you're still keeping fish yeah yeah some of, the, some of my favorite ones um got like five tanks so nothing okay crazy. nothing crazy oh. A couple of buckets if there's some fry, and then I'll put them in a tank. I'll go buy another one and throw uh -huh. it in there. <laughs> um, you, uh, you draw, uh, you design a lot of Tanganyikans. Um, do you like them as much as the Mbuna, or is that just uh, people that keep them are kind of crazy about them? So There's um, a lot of Tanganyika commissions. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've got an interest in them uh, since it started. I, I really am and looking into them more. I just, I've always been Malawi um, ever since I got out of South America. So it's, it's, they're cool. Some of them are, some are harder than others. Like some illustrations, it's just like, I've been drawing the snake head for like, oh, forever. It feels like, and I just can't uh -huh. get it. <laughs> but um, other stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm quick with most of the Mbuna drawings, most of the trophies. I can be kind of quick. Um, Frontosa is pretty, it's not quick, but it's faster than some of the other stuff. OBs, anything OB, flower horn, that'll take me like way too long. I don't even like doing those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I can see like the Trophius and the, uh, the uh, Frontosa being fairly simple as far as patterning. Yeah. And kind of about bold colors. And I mean, most Trophius are black with a, with a stripe of color. So yeah. it's like, a, it's like those Adidas knockoffs with only one stripe. Yeah, so. <laughs> they're not, not multi-patterned. Um, so. I do love them, though. I love trophies. So they're yeah. growing on me. Um, I've definitely been thinking about getting them. I just I need more tanks. Yeah, we don't we always need more tanks? Always need more tanks. What's the largest tank you've ever uh, had? 160. So. Nice. It's a good yeah. size. Yeah, it was good. good you don't sound too happy about it. I didn't like it. It was a square 160. It was like one of the tall ones, and I, I wanted yeah. like a you know an eight foot tank. Uh huh. And See, that's funny because I I like six foot tanks and eight. Well, I don't have an eight foot tank, but I do have a couple six foot tanks. But I recently got this 120 um, sort of cube uh, fat boy tank, and I love it. I put yeah. my Bruno in there, and I think it's a those short fat tanks are are good for those sort of setups but i mean i do want to see a fish swim for side to side too it really just depends on what fish you have in there like i have a tall tank tall 65 for my uh it's a, i don't know how to say this is a chromis or is a chromis blue trip the blue yeah, tip i have those in the 65 tall and they love it yeah um, so those are cool that's, fish that's tall tank yeah super cool fish but uh, do you think that you'll uh I mean, have you ever gotten into Victorians too, or just kind of dabbled? I've had one other Victorian species. It was uh, what was it? It was like a para something Lidochromus. Paralibidochromus chromogenius. One red of the fin piebald. Not the piebald. Blue or red? Macro macrothalamus. Uh, no, it was pundamilia pundamilia. Is what. It oh was. yes. Yeah, the those black. Are like, those are like all black, right? Yeah, all black, red fringes. Um, cool. They're cool. They're cool. I ended up selling them. So. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what we got to do sometimes. Got to do it. Uh, talk to me about uh, Fish Club. What's, Fish what's Club. that about? Are we allowed to talk about it? Yeah, hell uh, yeah. First rule. Awesome. First rule uh, of Fish Club. Club. I grouped together some of my friends in the hobby. Um, it was mostly just, at first it was me and Lee Ranheim, uh, who I'd become friends with. Uh, last year, uh, just through work, I was working on some graphic work for uh, Frontos RS with Ken Wynn, and unfortunately, he never got to see the final piece, but Lee did. So me and Lee came together to build a group, um, 
Then I invited my friend Brian, then my friend JJ, Nathan, Riley. They all kind of just came together and we made a little uh, f- Facebook group. And uh, it's been slow going. Really, we, we want to do more with Fish Club. We wanted to do memberships um, and offer some really cool online features and discounts with re- with certain retailers. Um, we're, uh-huh. we're still doing it, but it's just been everybody's kind of you know doing their thing and i'm swamped with work always so it's a slow roll but it'll get there um once the new website is finally built so. what's the eta on on the find your nemo new website i gotta talk to nicole <laughs> <laughs> uh she, she's been super busy and i mean i would i want to help her with it um I'm, i gotta learn some coding uh, 2020 uh, hopefully before 2021, definitely. I mean, it was supposed to be ready in uh, January. Uh, uh-huh. And I had, I was using a plugin that was through WordPress and it was supposed to do all the stuff I wanted it to do and it did, but it just wasn't like, I have a certain, you know, level of quality that I want to be at. And, you know, if it's, if the user experience is not, premium i don't want to be involved so that's what i decided it was like all right instead of rushing this and just throwing it out here and and having another aqua bid you know i don't want i mean not, nothing against aqua bid obviously they're cool ah. but but we love I, you aqua bid he wasn't trying to say this. i bought some fish from there one time i got the wrong fish um mm. <laughs> my only experience with aqua bid was the guy got hustled but um yeah so they say a sucker's born every Every day, man. So you know. Yeah, it was the first time I tried to buy the Isochromis. Um, I got I got some Estado Tilapia Bertoni instead. Oh man, that's yeah. not a bad fish. You know, that's like one of the number one studied fish in uh, fish medicine. No, like, I, people it's, study it's, that fish. Yeah. Cool. Um, they're big, but they're I not know ex- Josh Cunningham has some uh, Isochromis, right? That's where I got them from. Finally, I linked up with Josh. Um, after I did his logo, he gave me a sweet deal on those, uh, on his breeding group. So, Oh, nice. You have yeah. his breeding group. Yeah, his old one. I'm sure he has another one now, you know, because they, they, they spawn like more. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. But I've got a few um, growing out right now. So hopefully, I mean, I'm definitely going to keep some, but I've got like 90 probably growing out. Oh, man. It looks like yeah. I'm going to have to hit you up. Yeah, holla ball. They'll be ready soon. Probably another, like month or two i mean i don't know we'll see i might just share them with everybody keep probably 20 of them so i keep uh i keep i keep trying to do that spread spread fish around that um you know it's a tough world out there a lot of shasty individuals and uh you know or people that like um if you say free like they go nuts if you say five dollars they don't want to talk to you yeah uh (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I never have a problem selling fish. I can sell. I sold a group of five frontosa recently for my friend JJ. I could have sold them ten times over. Uh huh. And it was just a grown. They were mobas. Probably I think he wanted like three fifty for five of them. I had so many people interested. It was really just I have like a huge uh, online. Like network of fish nerds just dying to buy fish. Yeah, I just I don't have fish to sell them personally, so that's what we're actually going to be doing an auction hopefully next week um, with some of our our guys. I know Fred from Vegas Valley, Dave from Something Fishy. Um, I've been trying to I messaged Bush and we're talking about it from Southeast Cichlids, and uh-huh. I, I got a I got to call Dave uh, from Dave's Rare and see if he's on board too. Um, but yeah, hopefully they will be. And I mean, we're just, it's going to, it's going to be like a rotating bench. We're just going to pull people off the bench. Like, yo, come on. And as long as I think they're, they're good. Like if I've received fish from them or my partner has, then we know the quality that they're, they're handing out. And that's what we want to bring to your average consumers. Like, Hey, these are the places that are awesome. I mean, there's so many great places. So to it's fish. sort of like a curated uh, website with uh, hand selected uh, providers. Exactly, exactly. Cool. And I mean, tier, we're, we're calling them tier one uh, accounts. So if, if you're a tier one account, you meet the minimum requirements that we think are necessary to, you know, sell fish. We, we really just, I, I hate seeing like, you know, the guys that like, it's crazy. Um, Moonlight, I did their logo. They were great people from what I uh-huh. know. 
apparently they've just went off the deep end and no one can contact them. And Bottom I line, I know who you're talking about, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We won't know. name any names, but uh, yeah. yes. Uh, I heard that, yeah, we just disappeared, uh-huh. Yeah, and so and to me it's just like that shouldn't – I hate to see that happen, and I would imagine that's a major deterrent when people are ordering fish online. So I want to kind of dissolve that that little barrier for some people. I, I hear you. Like I, I see uh, I see new people in the hobby coming around, and and uh, they're telling you that where they ordered their fish from. And it's like a lot of these places I've never heard of at all. Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I know most reputable places, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, um, yeah, and then they're coming, they're coming to the, uh, you know, the group, and and they're like, why is my fish not the one I ordered, or or what is this, or why is it a female, or yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. So, that yeah. that's like like <laughs> really that first purchase for new people in the hobby. Can make it really a, salt them. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So hopefully we'll fix that up. I mean, I know personally, I'm in 300 individual uh, fish groups online, and I probably know over a thousand private retailers. You're crazy. Yeah. I don't know how you manage all that. I deleted I, all the fish groups. They come to me. I'm just like, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> they want to. They normally want a logo, or they they. They normally inquire about it, and I mean, I've been, I've tried to be very, you know, lenient, and I try to work with everyone when I can. So if I can, and um, some people, whew, they want some crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, that'll take me six years and 27 days. And <laughs> like, can you put a frontosa on Mars drinking a martini? That's a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Right on. Okay, so. Man, I think we covered uh, covered quite a bit. Um, yep. Where do you, uh, I don't know. What do you, we might be out of questions. We've been talking for like forty eight minutes. Uh, yeah. Do you have any topics you want to talk about? Um, no, I don't know. I, I mean, I I really want to start doing more uh, print auctions. Where, yeah, I want to bring that up a little bit. I just did one the other day. Yes, uh, I saw um, that on Instagram. Hey. Yeah, and I did two back to back. The first one I ran advertisements for, and we reached like fifty thousand people. And a few hours in, somebody bid five grand. And so I saw that. I, I was like, I was like, whoa, okay, five grand, nice. Um, he's ghosted me, and so I'm kind of me and the the second place bidder, which is my friend Brian. We're actually really good friends. He's gonna like let the painting go back up for auction. And what I think we're going to do is more of a GoFundMe style auction where we donate the print to the family and we have people bid or or basically like just like a GoFundMe, you donate a small amount or a large amount if wanted to a cause. And I think that's what we're going to do with that print. Um, and then the second one I just did the other day, that one didn't do as well because I didn't run an ad for it. Um, but I still want to get more into the auction atmosphere i guess um and just really be able to release these like they're one of a kind they're going to be signed and framed like hand framed here uh locally instead uh -huh. of because usually i outsource for a lot of the shirts like, like we have facilities in north carolina los angeles um one in latvia and so that's where a lot of the the production on, on the t-shirts comes from but everything that is like the art side is going to come local. Uh, my friend Zach's going to help me with the prints and with the framing. So cool. it's going to be really cool. And hopefully in the future, I'll, I want to do like a gallery that benefits the conservation organizations that I work with. So Right on. Well, that yeah. sounds awesome. Hopefully. So um, to get your socials out there, uh, it's Find Your Nemo. Yep. Find, uh, F-I-N-D-U-R-N-E-M-O. Yep, yeah, you are. It's the you. Yes. A lot of people put your. I'm. I'm gonna get the your domain. I just haven't got around to it. But so it's your are Nemo. That's dot com, and yep. they can find you on Facebook, Facebook page, Instagram. What yep. other socials you got that you actually uh, uh, pay attention to? Just Facebook and Instagram. Right. I'm trying to get on Twitter. Uh, I'm trying to no, get you, on. No, you.
YouTube. Everything I do, it has to have a certain level of quality to it. So if I'm going to do a YouTube channel, I want to do something that stands out from a production. I mean, I, I've done films. I've literally shot with like four hundred thousand dollar cameras before. You know, so uh -huh. to me, it's like I want to do a production that is equivalent to what I'm capable of. Wait uh, until you see the production level on this. Oh yeah, well this is this is fine. I'm just saying, if I, <laughs> you know, you know, every now and then we can do something like this, but I want to make sure it represents me and the brand effectively. And you have a, a high standards, it's fair to yeah, say. Very high standards. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, um, yeah. if we were live, we would take questions, but um, maybe people watching this, if we post this on Facebook, uh, we'll leave some questions. I'll get those back to you. We yeah, see yeah. each other every day online. Anyway, exactly. our paths cross. Um, so basically, thank you. I appreciate you coming on, thank answering you. these questions, putting yourself out there, being patient with me uh, mm -hmm. when I didn't get anything working. And uh, we'll try to get that fixed up and do this again, okay? Sounds good to me. All right. Have a good night. You too, brother. Peace. Peace.